Hi, I'm Matt Hocking. Um, I run a small values-based creative studio in Cornwall, and also uh, I'm senior producer for the Eco Design Challenge. Um, I've been lucky enough over the last few weeks, months, to be working with all the schools of Cornwall in different ways, and the teachers and the pupils, and I feel very privileged for this to have happened, and to to show them a, a series of creative tools that can maybe ease their the way they give lessons a bit and to get the students excited. And a couple, I've got a piece of paper because I've got the memory of a snowflake. So uh, um, <laughs> for when it comes to us, you know, one of the things is that's made me think over the last sort of few years really is what it's designed for and why are we here. Um, then recently, you know, with all the sustainability stuff, and my company does specialise in, you know, environment, sustainability, social issues. Um, you know, what is education for? You know, um, what, what's it there? What's it to enable? Um, you know, we have the idea, is, in, in my opinion, is, you know, successful learners, confident individuals and responsible citizens. But actually what I'm seeing through the Eco Design Challenge is the schools are more interested in, at secondary level in Ofsted points and racking, getting those points and looking good and new builds and things like that. And to me, and this is only from my, you know, the recent few months, and I could be completely wrong, is are we forgetting about the children and their roles? And, you know, uh, in a paper by Greenwald on place-based education um, in the global age, public ed education has become the business of training children and youth to enter the marketplace as consumers and workers. But actually... Where is the individualism in that? Where is the passion and the excitement? I mean, I wasn't trained in design. Um, I seem to just got lucky and uh, have taken the right step every time and been picked by the right people. And, uh, and design to me is just a tool for the lifestyle I wish to lead, which is to be able to surf and to live in Cornwall and to have time with my children. We only, you know, I do a four day week. I work between my children's hours. My team are also sort of brief to basically be as free as possible. Um, some of the stuff maybe I didn't have when I was as younger. So what, my question is, what is the role of creativity within sort of future learning and how we relate to schools. I think there's a huge opportunity um, for change and creative agents, I know there are creative agents out there, but constructive use of creativity mixed with educational tools. Um, today is the, all the briefs from 34 schools across Cornwall coming in. Um, it's a strange one because I really wish to be here, but I also wish to be seeing all the stories that are coming in. We've had constant calls all through the night and stuff going, God, we've got to hand this in, we've got an eco cafe, we've got to show you, and we've got to do that. And the energy that's coming from these teachers that's so enthused to be part of such a simple creative process is so inspiring. And so that's what I ask of you, is what, what is our role as creatives, if we are creatives, in, in the future? And also one of the things is, which uh, uh, Naveel said, and I fully agree with, is we all think too much, but children don't. The world is just an open oyster of just pure brilliance. I have four and three and four-year-old daughters, and every day I'm astounded by the things they come out with, which aren't, and I worry about by the time they're all around the time, by the time they're six or seven, because of education, they're going to start doubting, does Father Christmas exist? Do fairies exist? Why is a door there? And things like that. And I, I don't want all that to stop kind of thing. So, you know, how can we, you know, use creativity to keep the ideas coming from children, and that's me.